Well, how do you find your way in a strange new world? That's the premise of Son of Elsewhere, a memoir in pieces from culture writer and podcast host Elamine Abdul Mahmoud. Elamine joins us this morning with more. Good morning to you. Good morning, Annette. How's it going? Very good, very good. I enjoyed your book so much because elsewhere is a place that so many people who come to Canada or, or come to anywhere new from a different country kind of fit in, right? It's a very narrow space. For sure. There's something about the balance, right, of, okay, your home was once a different place and now you've moved um, and you're trying to make a home in a new space. Well, there's something about living in the middle and kind of existing in both spaces at the same time. This kind of liminality is a thing that I wanted to explore in the book and sort of give credence to, the idea that so many people sort of go through that experience. And what does that look like? What does it look like when you feel like your home is one place, but you, you know, a part of you belongs to somewhere else? And when you came to Canada from Sudan, you had a very rude awakening. I, I love the first line of the first chapter. It took two stopovers and 19 hours of total flying time for me to become black. Yeah. I mean, listen, I grew up in Sudan. Um, everyone that I grew up around was, you know, looked like me. Uh, we basically had the same skin color. And so my skin color basically had no meaning until I came here. And then I suddenly came here and I was handed, you know, I, I sort of joked that I had was handed blackness um, at the airport. And it was like, OK, you go and figure out what this means. Um, and the, 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 the next 22 years have been, you know, trying to figure out what that means. And like, that's a part of what this book is, is trying to um, kind of wrap my mind around, okay, I'm black. What does that mean? Does it come with rights and responsibilities? Does it come with a certain weight? What do I got to do to sort of understand its history? Um, and this is hopefully the beginning point. Right, because black in North America, you say, is so much different than black in Sudan because you had to kind of try and figure out as a pre-teenager when you arrived here, you were living with your yeah. dad, and it was like, okay, well, what kind of music should I listen to then? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, the, the other thing that is my dad moved to Kingston, Ontario. So, like, we... Very came white. From, from, <laughs> exactly, for, for sure. I came from Khartoum to Kingston. Um, and in Kingston, you know, I didn't have a lot of examples of varieties of what blackness in Canada might look like. I only had the TV. Um, and the TV, you know, was only showing me images of, um, like, Ja Rule at the time. And I was like, I don't know if I'm this. You know, this doesn't feel like something that I want to be associated with, mostly because I grew up in a pretty conservative sort of um, Muslim home. And so I would say that I ran away from the representations of blackness that I saw on television. Um, and it took me some time to sort of boomerang my way around. You say your first friend in Canada was Highway 401, and you've got some great anecdotes kind of sprinkled throughout the books. Things I didn't know about the 401, great stopover <laughs> tips. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't, uh, I don't take the 401 for granted. It's, um, it's a space where I spent a lot of time, um, whether it's uh, during university or, or high school, the 401 was my way out of Kingston um, to wherever I wanted to go. But now the 401 is what takes me home when I want to return to, when I want to return to Kingston. And so I don't take the 401 for granted. It's where a lot of my you know, emotional development has happened. Um, a lot of tears shed on that highway. Um, I, I, I adore the 401, and so because I don't take it, because I take it um, quite seriously, not for granted, I wanted to spend a bit of time with sort of giving shape to the specific space um, that kind of, you know, gives birth to all these emotions. And part of that, you're right, is sort of going back into, you know, the history bits of the 401. How did it come about? How did it come to play such a central role um, in Ontario? How did it change the province um, after it was constructed? Um, all of that stuff is in the book because I'm, I'm just so deeply interested in how space changes all of us. Right. We've got about a minute left, but I love that you heard the magic words on your very first trip to Canada, your, your arrival. You're here for hours and you hear double, double. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the earliest sort of anecdotes in there. I'm like, listen, people are familiar with the Tim Hortons commercial that uh, has like immigrants landing in Pearson and then they go to Tim Hortons. Um, and it sort of like looks like uh, an extra sentimental kind of commercial. But like to me, like that was just real life, right? Like, that's exactly what happened. Um, and I had to, at the same time, wrap my mind around a new land, around the fact that my dad now speaks English, and also, what the hell is a double-double? Um, and, so <laughs> and you found I, out, I well, sort of, you know, Elamine, we've, we've run out of time, but I, I want so yeah. many people to read Son of Elsewhere because just a fabulous book, and it's out now. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.